Hey everybody, Tom Ballator here again with a walkthrough of problem number three in P set four. Another pretty easy problem to code, so just enjoy this one. I assume that you've already read the documentation here, that you understand what you're being asked. The key thing here is that we're going to be implementing a function called isValidWord. And you should remember in the previous problem, we had that situation where we just made an assumption that the word that was coming in was going to be a valid word, at least in the sense that all the letters in the word were in the hand, that it was playable, that word. The reason we were able to make that assumption is because this function, isValidWord, exists. And that's what we're going to code right now. So let's take a look at Python, and let's see the doc string for what we've got here. Returns true if word is in the word list and is entirely composed of letters in the hand. Otherwise, it returns false. OK, so you're going to be returning either true or false. That's fine. Um, let's think about how we can code some of that. First of all, returns true if the word is in the word list. Well, that seems pretty simple to code, right? So if the word is in the word list, return true. But there's actually a problem if you code it that way. And what is the problem, do you think? The problem is that if the word is in the word list and you return true, this function is over, basically. And you're not going to be checking anything else. Like, for example, are the letters in the word actually in the hand? So doing it this way is not going to work in certain cases. So what I would recommend is actually if you check if the word is not in the word list. If it's not in the word list, you know you can return false. OK, so that's one way around that problem. Let's move on to the next part here. Let's think about, is it entirely composed of letters in the hand? First of all, we got a good hint here. Does not mute hand or word list. Here we're not muting the word list. We're just looking through it. But from now on, let's think about, first of all, making a copy of the hand, just like we did before. So make, excuse me, let me tab over. Make a copy of the hand. OK, you know how to do that using the dot copy method. That's a fine way of doing it. And then once we've got that copy, what we can do is look through each of the letters in the word and see if they're in the hand or not, right? And importantly, if they're not in the hand, just return false, right? So let's do this. So for each letter in the word, check if it is in the hand. You know what? Let me bring this one up here like this. OK, check if it's in the hand. Um, if it is not in the hand, then return false. So again, if you've got a word that you've chosen, but you don't have the right letters in the hand, then you just return false and you're out of there. That's good. But let's assume that a given letter, the first one in this iteration of this for loop, is in the word. What should we do? You can imagine a case where you've got a, uh, let's say, um, a word, um, let's say, good, okay, G O O D. And in your hand, you've got um, D O G is available right now. That word that you've chosen has two O's in it. So if you check only if the letter is in the hand, then yeah, O is in the hand which has D-O-G in it. But you couldn't actually play that hand with the word good because the, the amount of O's isn't enough. So we have to think of a way, this is a bit tricky perhaps, of taking account of the number of times that a letter occurs in the word and how many times it occurs in the hand or the copy of the hand. So let's do this. If it's not in the hand, then return false. Otherwise, and we're still in the for loop here. For a given letter, um, if it is in the hand, then decrement the copy value by 1. So you want to knock down the value in the dictionary by 1. We already saw how to do that in some previous code. OK. Now, Let's say you keep doing this, and you go through here, and what happens? If you get to a certain condition where you no longer have characters left, if you have less than zero available, then you've got to return false, right? So if the 
um, letter value in copy, excuse me, of hand is less than zero, return false. Okay, so that's pretty much the code you need here. Otherwise, if you make it through all this stuff and you haven't returned false yet, well, then you have to return true. And that will get you your points for this problem. Good luck.